<clears throat> so uh, we've been talking about uh, studying uh, women of the Bible uh, for several months now, and um, I, I quite honestly have been sort of pushing Sarah off uh, because I honestly, I don't always know what to do with Sarah. So maybe you guys will, will have some interesting uh, comments uh, as we as we talk about uh, talk about Sarah, Abraham's wife, um, and and not not this Sarah, uh, and uh, and and we were you know, we we're, we're going to talk about you, but since you came, we can't talk about you. Uh, but uh, um, I I sometimes don't really know what to do with Sarah, and so uh, so let's let's sort of. Uh, get into that, talk about Sarah a little bit. Uh, let me just give you a, an outline of Sarah's life to start with, uh, just, just so you're kind of reminded of, of some of the, the, the incidents, some of the experiences she had. Um, she went with her husband, Abraham, and their family when he left Ur, where apparently they were settled urbanites and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, went off into this uh, this country that they didn't know that uh, God promised to show them uh, a God that Abraham knew uh, to some degree, but that you know Sarah. We don't. We're not told Sarah had these experiences with God. So uh, you know, maybe it was only through her husband that she was hearing about this God that had promised to make them a great nation and give them a land and. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't imagine what that must have been like to uh, to, to to just follow uh, follow him as he uh, as he pursued this. Um, she was childless, which was in her uh, culture, her society, a, a mark of, of shame, something to be uh, be ashamed of, something to be um, despondent over. It was it was. Uh, there was no future for their family, no future for her, um, and and it was just a, a shattering experience to be um, infertile, uh, to not have children, and and so uh, she is childless, but she's promised that in her old age, God is going to uh, give her a child. Um, she 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 did laugh. We're gonna talk about that son. Well, wouldn't you? I mean, I, I, you know, sometimes we look down on Sarah a little bit for that, but I mean, come on, it's 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 ludicrous. It's 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 hilarious. It, it's it's so uh, so. And in the the I love the the Hebrew figure of speech. Uh, it was no it was no longer with Sarah as it is with women, or something like that. Is the is the is the phrase they use? But it was you know it basically meant. She's done with there's there's no hope, you know, and, and so yeah, she laughs at this whole notion. Um Abraham laughed, but somehow we remember Sarah. Abraham laughed as well. He did. He first time Abraham he laughed too. Yeah, good, um yeah, good the uh, I don't know, comedy period. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. I mean it's you know it was a belly laugh to, to think of that. Um so as as things went on, as the promise went unfulfilled, you will recall she gave her a servant girl Hagar to her husband to become another uh, another wife and a surrogate mother uh, through which she hoped to build her family. That's the way she puts it. Um, she uh, twice, uh, two times when uh, kings in different regions took a, a liking to Sarah, uh, Abraham said, uh, "Tell them, tell them you're my sister." Uh, because Abraham's looking to cover himself and he's afraid he's going to be killed if, uh, and, and somebody's going to take Sarah for their own if, uh, if they know that, uh, that he's her husband. And so uh, twice Abraham uh, uh, comes up with this plan. It's only a halfway lie because they are uh, related, uh, but, uh, but um, you know, it leaves out a pretty important thing that these, both these kings discover when God curses them basically because of the uh, the relationship um and they they come back to abraham and say why didn't you tell us <laughs> um isaac is finally born when isaac is born she sends hagar and her son ishmael away or as abraham sending them away uh don't want them around anymore um which seems pretty heartless 
Um, we're not told what her frame of mind is, but at some point, Abraham takes Isaac up on a mountain to sacrifice him because, quote, God told him to. Um, I, I, all, the only thing I can figure about that is that she had no idea. She didn't know where they were going, what they were going to do. Uh, Abraham uh, had faith, I suppose, that God was going to provide a sacrifice, and, and he did. Um, top it all off, Sarah is buried in a cave at the end of her life. That's, uh, that's where she winds up, in a cave there that uh, is the only property Abraham ever owns in the promised land. Um, that's a rough thumbnail sketch. There's other stuff, of course, that happens to Sarah, but that's, that's sort of, uh, for our purposes, enough to get it started, maybe. Um, from my perspective, the biblical record on Sarah is a little mixed. However, Sarah does uh, get mentioned in Hebrews 11 as a person who, uh, from whom we can learn about faith. Um, and, and so, I mean, there's, there's something there, right? That, that um, the, the, the writer of Hebrews, at least, felt that, uh, that, that Sarah had uh, a measure of faith that we could, could learn from. So um, let's, uh, let's talk about Sarah. And let's see what we get. Um, any thoughts to begin? Just, just, just let me throw it open. Uh, uh, maybe you read uh, some or all of the, the text that I suggested you take a look at today. Um, any thoughts whatsoever on Sarah? Just anything on your mind? I think a big part of her faith was in her husband. She called him Lord. Okay. So uh, you don't hear that in the Bible very much. Peter, you know, like we call Jesus Lord. Peter talks about the, the, the honor, the respect that, that uh, she yeah, showed to respect, Abraham. But, but, uh, yeah. She showed a lot of faith there. He went all over the place. But... It says in the same text that, that she did not give way to fear, which is interesting. She, she didn't give way to fear. I, I don't really know for sure what the, the fear that is, is being talked about there is. Um, maybe fear that he's going to lead her astray. Maybe. I, I don't know. But. But uh, uh, she, she, instead of showing fear, she, um, she maintains the, the, the respect that Peter kind of looks at as a, a model for Christian women in his era. Um, and again, the writer of Hebrews, faith. She had this faith. What else? Other, other thoughts? The question that comes to mind is where do they get that from? Where do they get what, what from? Sarah's faith. I mean, perhaps she had some, but it's kind of unfortunate that when she does act, it doesn't come up very well in Scripture. Okay. She doubts the coming of her son, and she comes off as pretty vindictive and heartless when she interacts with Hagar and Ishmael. We don't have anything else besides that, really. That's that's the struggle I have with Sarah a, a little bit. It's hard to, sometimes it's kind of hard to root for. Now, I will say this. Sarah had a rough time. <laughs> uh, you know, Sarah went through a lot. She was she she was uh, she had to had to deal with a lot. And you know, I, I just sort of mentioned some of the things she had to, to deal with as we started here. There's, there's a lot going on in her life. That, Patrick, yes, oh, I'm sorry, I Wait, didn't mean to cut you off. That's right. Well, most of the things that we've just I'm trying to think of the parallels. Most of the things that you've brought up in kind of the you know, well, what do we think of her? Is she, you know, is she a good, good, good or bad or whatever? I mean, you didn't use it that terms, but most of the things we're faulting her for, Abraham had parallel things to fault for. So I'm not sure why she's any different from Abraham, which we don't have any trouble saying was a man of God. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not excusing it, but she laughed, but so did he. Yeah. She sent Hagar in because she wanted a child and then had a change of heart. But who did the, you know, Abraham wasn't, I mean, he had a voice in this too, so to speak. I mean, he was troubled by the fact that, that, you know, they weren't getting along, but he had a, he was partly responsible for, you know what I mean? It's, I, I'm not understanding a little bit that, I mean, she he sent her in to pretend to be his sister for his own protection. Yeah, yes, and yes. she ended up being taken 
I mean, that's appalling by our by our sensibility today. And Abram's like, yeah, I got to protect myself. I mean, it. Yeah. I, I see parallel criticisms, and I don't know why she gets m more of it than that. I mean, we know less about her, I suppose. We I, don't I have. Think I think that's it. I mean, the, the things that are mentioned about her specifically uh, that she does, I, but again, but you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I think, as I said, there was a lot she's dealing with and a lot of it came her way because of her husband and, or, or, or because God told I me, mean, you know, her perspective would have been my husband is telling me to follow him to her, uh, uh, to, to the promised land, to, to, to leave my home. You know, that's what he's telling me to do. <laughs> yeah, that, that's rough. That, that, that's a tough. That's a tough thing to, to get into. Being given up, being given up to these foreign kings because Abraham's a little worried that somebody's going to try to take him out on, for her, on her behalf. I mean, yeah, I, I think you're right, and that's one of the reasons I, I, I should have said that I struggle with what to do with Sarah because while there's some stuff that happens that you know you can't exactly be in her corner rooting for her you certainly do understand why she does the things she does. And I, I, that's one of the things I want to sort of get around to and, and to talk about a little bit. Other, other thoughts? Yeah, we have some good told about Abraham to balance out all the mistakes he makes. We didn't have any of that stuff. He'd come out looking more like Jacob. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we, we do have more about Abraham. Yeah, and, and a lot of it being, a lot of it very positive. Abraham painted often in glowing terms in the Old Testament, obviously, because of who he was and, and because of his role in the, the history of Israel. One of the things that I, I have always liked about Genesis um, is it does not uh, paper over the character flaws and the, 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 it, it, the people there, though they're painted in often, often like legendary terms, they seem like real people <laughs> because they make the same mistakes we make, and they 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 often you know just goof it up as badly as you could goof it up, and and yet God still is is working with, them. and and Sarah is part of that, uh, you know, good, bad, indifferent. Sarah is part of that uh, that 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 line. Yeah, uh, Colette, did you have a comment? Yeah, I, I think I like this part about Sarah. It says, then Sarah said to Abram in verse five of the first couple of verses, you're responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my servant in your hand, on and on. But you can look at this both ways that she's being kind of complaining, but I like the strength of character and the moxie. I don't know, just saying <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> she just didn't roll over and take two, um, her suggestion because he did it. Like I said, you can see it both ways, but I like the fact that it, she she spoke what she felt, um, yeah. right or wrong. She was upfront. She said, "You could have stopped this, but just because I gave it to you, <laughs> I gave my man, my maid servant to you. You you didn't right. have to do it." <laughs> and um, and I like that about her. I like that that she spoke up about it versus being quiet and submissive to the, the, her thought of that being okay, uh, she had something to say about it. And that's let's, always the expression. Let's read in Genesis 16, that's a good point. Let's read in Genesis 16. Uh, that was the first text I wanted to look at. So let's read in Genesis 16. This is, this is the story of, of, of Hagar, Sarah and Hagar. Uh, now, now uh, at this point in time, she's still Sarai, Sarai, I don't know. I'll be want to say it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we, we won't get it right anyway. Uh, so Sarai, Sarai, uh, Abraham's wife had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed. That's so what I had said. And so after Abram had been living in Canaan, in Canaan 10 years, uh, and I, I think it's interesting that that time, reference, right? It's 10 years since we did what God said and came here, and we still got no children, and we're not getting any younger. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, he slept with Hagar, she conceived, and when she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Um, 
And Sarai said to Abraham, you are, you, Abraham, you're responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my slave in your arms. And now that she knows she's pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Um, I, I'm not sure she is saying as much, you shouldn't have done it, though maybe she is. I think she's definitely saying, you could stop this. You could do something about her treating me with contempt. Um, that's why she's getting it. Now, for us, we kind of go, well, Sarah, you know, princess, what's your problem? You know, just relax, just chill out a little bit. But I mean, a couple of things. Uh, again, she's feeling that shame of not having her own children. And I mean, this is a slave relationship. Now, we are repulsed by that whole notion, and rightly so. In their culture, that was not something they were repulsed by. And what Hagar was doing was a pretty, pretty serious thing in treating her, her, her mistress in this way. So while I have no sympathy whatsoever, <laughs> uh, at least you have to sort of see how in their world this was a, a major breach. Uh, what, what Hagar is basically doing is saying, I'm the primary wife now because I have the child. Uh, and so that's, I mean, that's a pretty serious thing. And, and Sarah responds uh, in a, probably a pretty predictable way. Uh, the fact that she comes up with this idea, um, sometimes I hear people really criticize her for, for the fact that she comes up with this notion, this plan, uh, which again, I understand. But what she does is actually well within the bounds of what her culture yep. expected. And uh, uh, probably, you know, probably would have been surprised if she had not tried this. I mean, this, this is what you did. This is the way it worked. Think about Jacob later. And I would say she's yeah. not the only yeah. woman who did that. No, because, no. Uh, Leah, Leah and Rachel. gave her maid to Jacob when he stopped <laughs> coming to her, I guess. And then, uh, who was the other wife? Uh, Rachel. Rachel, Rachel yeah. gave her maid because she wasn't getting pregnant. I mean, so this seems... is what you did. This is the way it worked. And, and this is not, none of this is, is unusual, uh, out of bounds in their culture. It seemed weird to us. We, we, we look at it and just kind of, but, but just understand that what she does is absolutely within, within bounds in our world. But it still backfired on well, it does. Nice. I, I, I mean, it, it does. It works. Uh, the so problem is they think they have to make up for God's mistake. That, that's that's, that's, that's the problem. problem. And so is Abraham. Yeah. Both it's all. Yeah. That that's the issue, I think. Uh, that 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 they did not wait. Now, you know what? They're not necessarily writing God off. But they're, they're sort of saying, hey, maybe we can, maybe this is what God meant. You know, maybe this is, this is how this is going to happen. I mean, that, that's a very human thing, right? Uh, yeah. Let's help God out a little bit here. Let's, let's, uh, let's sort of move things along so that, uh, that God's will can be done. Uh, Colette, did you have a point? Yeah, it just seems like what you said about our culture, it doesn't make sense to us. But it didn't make sense to them on some level, too, spiritually speaking about things, you know, like, well, like you said, let's speed this up. Let's, let's figure out if we can get to the same ending, um, going about it a different way. Maybe I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I still just think Jesus came from one crazy family. I mean, I, agree. It's just, <laughs> I mean, you're never going to look at the patriarchs as a model of Christian home life. I mean, it's just bizarre. But isn't that, isn't, isn't that a little comforting that Jesus came from a crazy family too? I mean, that's, that's kind of, it's for me. Hey, watch it there. <laughs> it's like one, Christy, one of Christy's relatives who used to tell people, well, at least I never murdered somebody. <laughs> okay. That's your bar. Hey, more power to you, you know? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it is. It's it's, and that's again what I like about Genesis. There's this just this constant chaos that just sort of drives the story along, and it's God like, it's like God herding cats, right? <laughs> it's like trying trying to get everybody sort of lined up and where 
where they're supposed to be, and, and they won't, you know, they won't have it. Um, so in Berkeley, one, I love you. So she, she owned the slave. Yes. So is that literally she owned the slave, or it says she? It doesn't say they. It doesn't say Abram. At least, at, at least she served uh, Sarah particularly. I think is the is what's what's different. Now I, I don't know how ownership would have been done. Um, but probably if she owned Hagar, it was because Abraham gave. Hagar to her uh, in some way, uh, or she acquired. You know, they were they were in Egypt, so maybe she acquired Hagar. I just in wonder Egypt. if if if, it, if she was her slave, Sarah's slave. Why does she get mad at Abram whenever she's treating her with contempt? I mean, I'm thinking she's your slave. You take care of it. Of I, it. I think it. because it, it says in verse uh, three, Sarah gave her to her husband to be his wife. Oh, I see. So I believe what Sarah understands is that, you know, now you're responsible. Now, now you, yeah, you know, sense. now, now you're responsible for, for this. Uh, she's a second wife uh, 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 in some, in some way. Um, and, and she, I believe, feels that she's the primary wife after she right. conceives. Um, so Abram, Abram says, but Abram says, what you say, Sarah, your slave is in your hands. <laughs> Abram says, you take care of it, uh, passing the buck along. Abram seems to be pretty good at that sometimes. He, he, he's pretty good at, at letting other people take care of things for him. And, delegate. Yeah, delegate, <laughs> delegating. That's a nice way to say it. Uh, so he delegates this out to, uh, to Sarah to deal with. And uh, Sarah mistreated Hagar and she fled from him. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert uh, and says, where have you come from? Where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress. Uh, then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you're now pregnant and you'll give birth to a son. You should name him Ishmael. For the Lord has heard of your misery. He'll be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he'll live in hostility toward all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. But she said, I've now seen the one who sees me. Um, so Hagar bore Abram a son. Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son. He had born. Um, Abram was 86. And, uh, when Ishmael was born. So um, God sends her back, which is... Interesting and maybe a tad troubling too, and sends her back with the the mandate. What is the mandate? She is sent back with submit to you know. That suggests that they both were kind of responsible for the death rate. Well, I, I think that I think that Hagar bear, is 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 seen to bear some responsibility for this. Now, again, in our in my way of thinking, I kind of look at that and I go, you know, right on Hagar. You you go you 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 you, know, you tell that woman what you, know, what, what you think are. Um, but that's that's not the way it seems to be regarded, and uh, and she is now God hasn't forgotten her, and God doesn't think she's worthless, and God sees her her work. God sees her, and that's what she says. I I, I know God sees me. I, you know, I, He's not just Abram's God, right? He, he sees me too. Um, and, and so, but but go back and and submit. Which is hard for well, us to if your if your theory is right that the anger with Abraham is because from Hagar is not is because Abraham's allowing her to look on her with contempt versus correcting that the angel of the Lord while he sends her back also does what Hagar was asking Abraham to do because he says you go back and, and be there. But you be in submission to her, not taunting her, if you yeah. will. Yeah, I don't know that that's accurate, but I find that interesting. If if that is the scenario that the angel does, that doesn't say go back and taunt it. it says go back and act proper in the yeah. situation. I mean, I think that's reasonable. I think that's a reasonable way to read this. Um, so yeah, so um, again, I, I think the, the the struggle we have is. Um, is, is, you know, what do we think of this? I mean, uh, 
the 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 cultural realities are fine, but I, I think the the lack of what we kind of perceive as a lack of faith is 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 uh, is what stands out to me here. Um, if you then look ahead into Genesis 17, uh, scroll down to scroll down, so scroll down or turn, whatever you're doing. Uh, <laughs> Patrick, before you go on, can you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm struck when you say it's a lack of faith. Can you expound on that more? Because, well, I think it's what um, I, someone said a group with you, I forget who said it, uh, is that we're not doing it the way God would have us to do it. Therefore, there's the conflict. But in our error, is there still faith? And I think that's why I want you to, because I mess up all the time, but I don't think it's because of the lack of faith. I, I, I don't know. Just if you would say more. Yeah, I, I mean, sometimes I mess up because of a lack of faith, uh, 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 for sure. Uh, I, I, maybe that's too easy to say, a lack of faith. Maybe it's... it's belief and my commitment to God when I say my faith. But she, she uh, I, I think this thing goes off the rails. Now, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? It's one of those things where we look at it and we go, well, it didn't have to happen. It, maybe it shouldn't have happened. But of course, then Ishmael isn't even born. And so, you know, I, I don't think Hagar would have regretted that it happened. I don't think Hagar would have regretted all this had gone on. Um, so the, the lack of faith I had in mind is God says, I'm going to give you a child. And time passes and Sarah seems to take matters into her own hands. And Abraham. Uh, and and I'm, I'm sort of thinking of that or, or talking about that as they sort of ran out of faith. Uh, at least for in, in that moment. We'll call it weak faith. Now that's not that does that's not once and for all, right? That's not they quit believing at all. I, we we're not really told anything at all about Sarah's theology, about her belief in God that I saw. We're, we're not really told much at all about. It. So it shows Abraham had a little weak faith to go along with the plan. But Abraham was the one who was receiving the so the you know the communication, and and he says, yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. Um, so. Um, they probably misconstrue what faith really is. It's not something you absolutely have or yeah. absolutely don't. It's situational. It ebbs and flows. And this is definitely an ebb for both of them. And, and, and I, later on the mountain, we see it perhaps at its peak with Abraham. I'm sure Sarah had too. I mean, all of us are. I mean, I've made mistakes like that where I just, and in the moment, I just kind of ran out of faith or I forgot something. I forgot or I lost sight of God's faithfulness or, or something along those lines. And, and um, I lost sight of the fact that God's faithfulness uh, has something to do with my life and my present. And, and, and I, I think that's a very human thing. And, and I, I, so that's, that's kind of what I meant, Colette. I hope that sort of helped. Um, I, 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 I don't mean it in the sense of, you know, she just, left God altogether to whatever degree she was there. Um, it, just that she lost lost sight of the promise, perhaps. And they both did. They both did. Yeah, re reverting to something Christy said, you know, it, it's Abraham too, but it, if, if Hebrews refers to Sarah as a, as a person of faith, hmm? we don't have to actually necessarily even zero in on the passages that specifically are talking about what Sarah did. The fact is, Sarah apparently leaves Ur with Abraham and then goes up to Haran and then leaves all her relatives. And as far as we know, she never sees them again um, in, in her life. And she follows this crazy man um, <laughs> out into the desert and they're wealthy, but I mean, Everything that Abraham, it's like Ginger Rogers, you know, she did everything that, that Fred Astaire <laughs> did backwards, high right, heels. Uh, in, in high heels, right, and, and Sarah is doing, she's there all the time in support, and sometimes in a starring role, but that's the other thing then, sometimes when the Bible's telling a story, um, 
especially if it's a true story, a character is just there because the character was there. I mean, it, it, it's not that every, it's not a parable here, right? Every, right. every vintage, everything, these are not necessarily vignettes from which we always are expected to derive some kind of meaning. Sometimes this is just what happened. And, and I don't think the writer is expecting us to say, oh, Sarah, justify somehow Sarah's saintliness or even find that Sarah was um, wrong. It's, it's just, and oftentimes it's just a narrative function um, to help, you know, you need another character there to explain for Abraham to talk to or, 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 or things to explain because she was just part of the story. So we don't have to come to judgment on every interaction here because sometimes the interaction there is not really there for us to come to judgment. It's just to tell the story. Right, and, and I certainly in Genesis and certainly in the Abraham cycle of stories, uh, it's God's promise that is center stage, right? It, it's not really, the characters are there, the, the people are there, I say characters, like, but the, the people are there, but it's God's promise that is center stage. And it's God's promise that is supposed to be the sort of formative thing in their lives. And you, you see that as you go down in chapter 17, um, after all this has happened, um, God comes back to Abram and he says, uh, uh, he, called, he, he, names, he names Abram, Abraham, renames him Abraham. Uh, you've got to keep my covenant, he says. Um, circumcision uh, is, is chief among the, the signs of that covenant. Uh, as for Sarai, your wife, you're no longer called Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. So it's like, almost like God says, okay, <laughs> let me clarify. <laughs> here's what I meant. Here, here's, what I, here's what I wanted you to understand. I will give you a son by her, by Sarah. Um, uh, and Abraham fell face down and he laughed and said to himself, will a son be born to a man 100 years old? Will Sarah bear it? age of 90. And Abraham said to God, if only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Abraham is still trying to say, look, we got this perfectly good kid here. Why, why don't we just make that be, you know, be the fulfillment of the promise? I'm going to feel a lot better about that because that's happened already, right? I mean, don't, I feel that way sometimes. I, you know, I, you hold on to the things that you already have, right? And, uh, to, to let go of that and, and obey God can be a challenging thing. And believe God can be a challenging thing. God said, yes, but your wife, Sarah, yes, he will live under my blessing. But your wife, Sarah, will bear you a son. And you will call him Isaac. Yes, suck. He laughs. Which becomes important. Um, I'll establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after uh, as for Ishmael, I'll surely bless him, but my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. <laughs> as specific as I can be now for you, Abraham, <laughs> the, the son will come through Sarah, and it will be by this time next year, and that's the one that will uh, I will establish the covenant through. Um, I, I, it's a nice touch, too, that God says, as, as Abraham is drying the tears away from his eyes, from laughing, uh, Abraham says, when your son's born, call him, he laughs. I like that. Um, so then chapter uh, uh, 18, I wanted to look at, um, and this is the story, of course, of the three visitors that in some way represent the Lord, represent God. Um, and uh, they come to uh, Abraham, he and Sarah show them uh, extravagant hospitality, uh, a calf for three, <laughs> for three uh, visitors. That's a lot of meat, man. That's a lot of meat. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, but, but, what's that? Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay. So, um, Verse 10, one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind it. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing, so Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, 
after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? I think it's funny. Peter says she called Abraham her Lord. I wonder if he's talking about this passage where you know, my Lord is old. It's, it's not exactly a flattering, uh, a flattering statement. Uh, he's over the hill and so am I. And, you know, and, and then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, well, I really have a child now that I'm old. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I'll return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yeah, you do. <laughs> you know it. So, yeah, so again, this is the reiteration of this promise that God is, is making over and over again. You're going to have this child. You're going to have this child. I'm going to, I'm going to seal the covenant through this child that you're bringing into the world. Sarah, you're going to have this child. Now, next year, you're going to have a child. Um, and the laughter all around as they do. Um, comments, thoughts. I can't blame them. I mean, you have to wait. Can you imagine if we were asked to wait 10 years for anything? Yeah. I mean, we yeah. wouldn't be able to do it, right? I, 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 the laughter to me, I mean, it, it seems very human. Uh, she's not... You know, she doesn't seem bitter. She doesn't seem angry. She just thinks it's ridiculous. <laughs> Which I don't know that any of us would be that different if we heard something like this. Um, it, it's you know it's you know I, I it, it's just it's just boggles it, it just boggles the mind to think of something like this and 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 they the laughter. It, it seems, I mean, it doesn't seem like, it seems good natured, right? As, I guess, guess what I'm trying to say. I, I, I think she definitely doesn't believe, but it's not like, but I mean, that's a problem that she doesn't believe. And I guess that's the issue that, 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 that we're supposed to see. Well, we don't have to make excuses for it. Yeah. She's a person of faith anyway. Yeah. There and, is. There is. And, in this. But there, there is, though, in this passage, as you point out, laughter is a recurring theme yep. here. Um, I mean, when she does give birth, she laughs. And Isaac, it's a name, right? That means laughter, I think. Um, or he, I'm sorry, he laughs. He laughs. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a lot better than the names of like Jacob and what it means. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, but, but actually, it. It is easy to overlook that, but when you think about it in Christian terms, this is the fulfillment of a long awaited promise. Transition over to Matthew and Luke with the birth of Jesus and the angels saying rejoice um, and Christmas being a happy holiday. Um, maybe, maybe there's, you know, maybe there's some parallelism there. Um, maybe, maybe we're supposed to see that. I mean, it's right. The first sign that the promise is going to be fulfilled and, and there's some celebration associated with that. There's, yeah. I, I don't know. I, maybe I'm pushing it too far, but no. it seems like that laughter, it's too much there to be an accident. It, it, well, it's it's intended that we're supposed to take note of that. It's definitely, and, and you look then at Genesis 21, which is the, the text I want us to end on. Now. You look at Genesis 21, when Isaac is born, the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, <laughs> and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. <laughs> Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised. Abraham gave the name Isaac laughs to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circ circumcised him as God commanded. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter. And everyone who hears about this will laugh with him. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> God has made me laugh and everybody that hears about this is going to laugh too. This is hilarious. This is a riot. This is, and it's, it is, it's that, it's that celebration. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? 
yet I have borne him a son in his old age. And, and I guess that's maybe the point of the laughter that, you know, Abraham laughs, Sarah laughs. You know, when he's, when he's born, you be sure you name him, he laughs. <laughs> and, and when he's born and Sarah laughs, the laughter has changed, right? It's no longer now, I can't believe this. It's now, I can't believe this. <laughs> this is amazing. It's, it's, this, is, this is stunning. This is, as you say, Ron, this is cause for celebration. And, and you know, God does that. And, and maybe that's what we, maybe if we're supposed to take something away from all these <laughs> crazy people doing these crazy things, uh, maybe what we take away is God's faithfulness and that God changes that laughter over time from the laughter of disbelief to the laughter of celebration. And in, but, in the passage, you go ahead, Ellen. I just, that's the interesting question Hebrews said. She judged him faithful, which had promised yep. him. When does that happen? Yep. When signs are unmistakable or sometime before. Uh, but that's the way that we are. You know, sometimes the signs have to be unmistakable. You know, that's the Lord. I prayed for that. And now the Lord is doing it. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't think about it before. And, and I think that's a really good point that maybe... When we, if we get there, the point is we got there, <laughs> not how long it took us, not how many times God had to hit us over the head first. The point is we got, and, and she gets there. She gets there to where she realizes God is faithful. But, and in the, but in the passage you read, it says the Lord was gracious mm -hmm. to her. So, I mean, I, we, we seem to be struggling with whether or not Abraham was a person of faith or, or not, or Sarah was a, you know, what, how was, was her faith? But the passage seems to suggest the, the faith hadn't, wasn't actually key to the promise. I, I mean, a promise was made. And if it's grace in terms of New Testament, I know I'm bringing in a Greek word, or, but it's, if the concepts are equivalent, it is still unmerited favor. And, and no matter how faithful Abraham was, um, the promise is still something that no one deserved. Um, right. it, it's God being faithful to himself um, and, and, and to what he's done. And, and that has a lesson for us as well. Um, maybe we shouldn't be, maybe we should just take comfort in the fact that Sarah did have her problems and Abraham did have his problems and, 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 we want to make them better, so to speak, so they deserve it. But do we really want to? Maybe we want to make them worse, um, to be more like us, right? Um, and, and realize that God still is faithful and, and, and fulfills what he did. One was said he did. Right. I, mean, you want to make I was just going to say it's been 25 years. Yeah, right, right. And it's what, 25 years later, God has fulfilled his promise. Yeah. 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 That's it. A long time. It's a long time. <laughs> and he's been affirming it all along through that time. But that's that's a long time. I, I laugh at things 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, Sorry, somebody... I was, I was going to say, I like, I think it's back in chapter 17 that God's grace does show a willingness to reaffirm his promise. Mm -hmm. And they're just not waiting, waiting, waiting. But he, he goes back and says it again. And I think that's pretty incredible that God is not angry that they lack faith in believing that he's going to do this. But he's like, I need to, I like the way you said it. I need to be crystal clear <laughs> that this is going to happen. And that shows uh, how gracious he is and, and, and how he holds to his promises. But a willingness to come and reiterate that when... You know, I lose some of the promises, but to come back and say, hey, wait, 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 this is still going to happen the way I said it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It's a really good point. I see. Other thoughts? I think we could safely say that Sarah, over time, came to trust God to do the impossible. She did. And so she did. She did. 
Christy, did you have come in? You're on mute, Christy. Sorry. This is um, not, there's no lesson here, but I find it interesting, the two parallels, the of, of God reminding them about the promise, the one directly to Abraham, and then they all go off and get circumcised, and then following that, the visitors. Obviously, we're not necessarily told the time sequence or anything. Yeah. But the it's just a curiosity to me. Like, did Abraham not share that with Sarah? Like, he believed it enough at that point to get all the guys taken care of, and then she still seems puzzled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just right. a curiosity to me. I don't know what it. I don't. I don't know that there's anything to take from that. But no, that's a good point. That's a, that's a good point. That's, it's interesting now, the way and you know, the different forms that affirmation, that reaffirmation takes throughout this story is, is interesting to me too. The, the different ways that God says, this is what's happening. This, don't you see it? This is what we're doing. Um, well, and, and the narrative leaves out the scene that I would have liked to have heard about when the three visitors come back. They said, surely, you know, I will return. So apparently... <laughs> There was another visit. Yeah. You don't get to hear about that one. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Other comments, thoughts? I think the whole narrative shows that we're, they were in a work of, in a work of progress, right? They were Sarah, working. They, they were working. Abraham, they're both making mistakes, but they're always growing in the right direction. And that's why he becomes a father of faith in their Bible. But well, it's like us, we're the same way. Yeah. And the covenant was a work in progress, right? It was still, it was still being fulfilled. It was God still at work in that, even. And the whole thing was was something that, yeah, absolutely. It's it's we're all still in process. The all of faith is a real gold scale. Yeah. yeah. Well, there we consider worse than her. Jephthah. Yeah. yeah. Samson. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and also, we should, I mean, Paul in Galatians has an interesting twist on this too. Yeah. The whole Sarah and Hagar thing, um, which, I mean, I think people realize, I mean, Paul somehow ends up connecting Sarah to the, probably more to the Gentiles and Hagar to the, the Jews under the law, which is sort of a, a little bit of a flip-flop, but, uh, um, we, <laughs> but, but we can, I mean, the, the whole point is that Sarah along with the Jews who refer to Sarah as Sarah mother, um, um, according to Paul, Sarah is also our spiritual mother as, as well, um, because um, she was a free woman. Maybe at, at uh, BBS next year, we should sing Mother Sarah instead of Father Abraham. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's not necessary. <laughs> It doesn't, yeah, it didn't fit. Yeah, it didn't work. I'm going to try that. It didn't work. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, the, 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 and the thing that, that you see when, when Abraham is concerned about driving, Sarah, driving Hagar off, and God says, essentially, don't worry about it. This is the way it's going to be. This is the way it needs to, this is the way things need to happen. And that's, that's hard to hear because, you know, you, you, you want to think, isn't there a way we can all just get along? But God says, this is what has to happen. And then Paul later uses that as a way of saying, you got to get rid of the slave woman <laughs> to, <laughs> to have the child of covenant, uh, the, the child of the covenant, the, uh, the child of promise be, uh, uh, you know, take center stage. And uh, you know, he's telling the people in Galatia, you're not getting rid of the slave woman. You're, you're, you're hanging on to her and, and you need to be uh, driving her away. And, and uh, I, I, yeah. I, I, Still later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I, I don't think I'd be as good as Hagar, I'd be like, wait a minute, you told me to go back and now you're sending me away. I mean, exactly. Again, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pick, make, you know. Yeah. And, and, the, and the lo lovely scene of happiness is real, but then it's not after, you know, it's not that many years later till they're thinking again about the threat Ishmael is. And, and, and it's interesting too, isn't it? That Ishmael, that Hagar winds up being finally sent away because Ishmael was laughing at Isaac. Sort of turns the whole thing back on its head a little bit. Um, 
All right. Thanks very much, everybody. I appreciate all your thoughts and uh, good to hear from okay. you. I've got I one know, question. I know. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. One question. Was Sarah the only woman in the Bible that God changed their name? <sighs> Trying to think of another one off the top of my head. Anybody can think of another woman that God changed her, her name? Usually men. Yeah, usually men. I can't think of one off the top of my head, Linda. Okay. Then that makes her the only one. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, can't, can't think of one, another one. Now, maybe there is one somewhere tucked in there between. At the moment. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.